All right, Councilman Mike Crystal, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. So uh, the first thing I'd like to ask you about, you know, the last time we spoke, you had just been sworn in and taking your seat on council. What has this job been like for you uh, since about six months ago, I guess? So I, if you recall, it was sort of baptism by fire because we got sworn in on June the 10th and then uh, the budget, we were in the, right in the middle of the budget. Um, we had three weeks of, of, uh, to immerse ourselves with the, to familiarize ourselves and immerse ourselves and, and advocate for the six council Matic. And, uh, you know, I, I thought we, given the circumstances, I thought we did a pretty good job of, of putting our imprint on, on the budget. Um, but that, but it was like three weeks of craziness and then we adjourned and then it was, you know, well, time for me to get my staff and my district office up and running and do some training and all the introductions you, know, you can imagine uh we, we met with every department head uh all the legal counsel um the staffers uh, all summer long we did the meetings the meet and greets and then uh since september we've been back uh at it in uh, in person as you know uh, on the on the council floor tackling some of these uh, really tough issues that uh that the city's facing right now. And so people, 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 Larry, people have been asking me that. I don't know if this is makes sense or not, but people ask me the difference of being a state rep and a city councilman. And I, I think I've narrowed it down to a, a military phrase in that I went from the Air Force to the infantry, the Army infantry. You know, I'm sort of like hand to hand combat now. Whereas before, uh, you know, we were doing budgetary and legislative issues in Harrisburg. Here, we're jumping right into uh, like three hours into the new year. I got a phone call that there was an explosion in Port Richmond in our district where these uh, uh, folks um, were, their homes were destroyed. Thank God, no loss of life. And if you'd seen the, the destruction on that site, it is hard to believe that nobody nobody was killed. There's literally yeah. those two houses were leveled. So yeah, so so you know, spending several days down at Port Richmond, trying to make sure that all the city resources were connected to those folks, answering as many questions as we could. We still don't know the cause of the explosion, and according to the the gas department and the Office of Emergency Management. We may not know for quite some time, but what if we ever find out what the exact cause of the explosion was? Um, and then two nights ago, in, in my in the northern part of my district, there was a, a, a triple shooting. I don't know if you saw that uh, mm -hmm. right near Lincoln High School, uh, unrelated to the school, uh, but clearly a targeted attack on four individuals that, that um, for whatever reason, were targeted. And three were killed, and one is in critical condition in a hospital. So yeah, so we're, so we're not just writing legislation; we're literally out on the streets uh, trying to make sure we're connecting city agencies with uh, with the neighborhood, and certainly keeping a um, <clears throat> continued dialogue with all our captains in the district, so that we can share information with them that we learn, and they can sort of brief us on what they're doing. Um, because public safety is a really, really big issue right now. So coming into the spring, in addition to public safety, what, what are some of your, your top priorities legislatively? So, uh, you know, I think we really want to start to attack the uh, quality of life issues. And in order to do that, I think we're going to, um, uh, well, one thing we, we just, passed an ordinance on the uh, I don't know if you saw our ordinance on the truck truck parking you know that's been a, a really big problem so we're now going to be able to communicate more directly and get signage up more directly with the streets department on where you can actually park these larger vehicles and other vehicles because um, that ultimately leads to quality of life issues in the neighborhood um, we uh, I think we have a unique opportunity, Larry, here in that there's new leadership in the parking authority. And we've had some preliminary conversations with Rich Laser, who was in the Kenny administration. And uh, 
he is sympathetic to our plight with these vehicles and he's willing to assume more responsibility within his staffing to crack down on on what we identify in in the uh, in, in the districts as as problem parking and problem truck parking so i feel pretty good about that that we have the legislation passed and we have potential partners besides l and i and the streets department on enforcement and i think we're going to continue to work with mayor kenny's administration not just on a case by case basis but on like we did with the budget back in June, giving them the money to hire folks to do the enforcement. We also increased the, the, the money for 300 new officers in the police department. That's the good news. Uh -huh. bad, bad news is we're having a tough time hiring. The first mm -hmm. class we, we had back in August, seven individuals showed up. So they had to cancel the, the um, the training for the police and uh, in a new a new round started in December, but we lost what four months there that we could have had more trained officers on the street. So I think part of our job is to make sure we have the money to uh, bolster public safety, to bolster a license and inspection, and then which we did, but then getting getting people hired is our next challenge. So. What we did back in November was we introduced legislation uh, that is pending that relaxed the residency rules uh, for hiring um, of city employees. We think that that's going to give us some more tools in the toolbox to hire some more people. I would have my preference, obviously, would be to have Philadelphians hire, but we've been trying unsuccessfully. And so, um, yeah, I figured we got to do something. So we introduced that. And I think we're getting some momentum on uh, um, on that piece of legislation. And hopefully it'll be entertained sometime soon when we come, we go back on January the uh, 19th. So how are you going to handle the budget process uh, th this spring? You know, it's going to start probably in March. And you saw a little bit of it uh, right after your sporting. What are you looking at? What are you keeping an eye on? Uh, let's say that again, Larry. Uh, what it, you know, the budget process is going to start probably in about March and the hearings right. will begin. What are you keeping an eye on and what are some of your priorities for that process? So we, we haven't, uh, one thing is particularly of interest to me is this, we have an all-inclusive playground uh, that is being designed for uh, Winchester Park area of my district, and it will it will really be one of the the the, the only of its kind, other than uh, FDR Park down there, um, that will actually you know be able to handle some special needs uh, children, and we think that is really important for us to send a message to the to the uh, autism community and the special needs community that. You're as important as any other child in this. So that's going to be a, a big push of ours. Um, we're going to continue to push to fund L and I, L and I, L and I. I know we're going to get to that later in the in the interview. Uh, but there's there's going to be you'll, you'll, and we'll send this to you within the next week, there's going to be a, an aggressive round of recruiting for L and I coming out of the L and I department. Um, and we're going to need to, and want to get the word out that. Philadelphia's open for business and, and is hiring. So, so I, I think navigating the, the process of putting more money into the agencies for enforcement, whether that be streets, whether that be L&I, whether that be public safety, you name the department. Um, we just right now are shorthanded. And that, that I, I can't stress that one enough. Um, I am going to introduce legislation to um, ban fuel sales for unlicensed vehicles. You know, I think that, that's that's going to be really important to us. These ATVs, while I, I get if they're in the right areas and and they're not on public streets being a nuisance, they can be a very entertaining uh, form of entertainment. But 
the reality is we're seeing in our district is, you know, they're, they're on the Roosevelt Boulevard, they're on Frankfurt Avenue, they're on Aramingo Avenue, and they're, they're not just on those roads riding, they're actually violating speed limits and common courtesy on the road roadways. So more is going to have to be fleshed out, I think, when, when we introduce this legislation. You know, we don't want unintended consequences. But at the same time, we want to highlight that we got a problem um, and unlawful behavior is not going to be tolerated. Same thing with uh, the district attorney's office. We, we've approached the attorney general uh, about um, more enforcement in the city. If the, if, if the district attorney's office isn't going to prosecute, somebody needs to. Uh, you saw the problem we had with the Wawa's closing in Center City. And uh, part of it was, you know, retail theft was being un, un, unmet. You know, they, we, we weren't arresting people. And if we did arrest people and it was less than $500, they were getting thrown out. Well, what message is that sending to our to our folks that you can come in and steal up to a certain amount and it's okay it's not okay so that'll be part of our i think part of our our 2023 uh and just general quality of life issues um i think we talked a little bit back in june we were starting to get phone calls about boom parties I don't yeah, know, yeah, know. yeah yeah so i didn't know what a boom party was until until this past year but what they do is they have this network of of either uh, text chains or email chains that say, hey, we're going to meet at this certain location at 11 o'clock tonight. And then all these cars gather and then they come out with all these big speakers and they literally have a party uh, not worrying about how loud this music is. And uh, I, we we actually had phone conversations with the chief of police of Cinnaminson and Del Ran, New Jersey's, that they're folks are being woken up at night from the boom parties on our side of the river and so you can imagine our our, our neighborhoods like Taconi and Tarsdale and Bridesburg and Port Richmond that these parties were, were, were assembling it's a, that's a quality of life, life issue that we're going to concentrate on as well. Sure. Um, so you had mentioned being chair of the licenses and inspections committee and, and this is a really important committee uh, and we, we know that because we know that we have older buildings in the city, older homes, and, and there's so much going on with this. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're looking at your chairmanship of that committee and what some of your goals are? Sure. So, yeah, I take that responsibility as chair, you know, very seriously. As you know, Al and I um, is crucial to public safety um, with, with regard to our occupancy in our buildings. And so... What we, and, and before I get into a little bit of that, I, I do want to let you know that Senator Tartaglione and Representative Hohenstein and I are sending a letter to the congressional delegation from Philly and the Senate delegation in Pennsylvania to ask for consideration with the infrastructure money hmm. that would actually look at some of the older um, pipes and gas mains and leaks, okay. those sort of things. We want to ask the federal government to help us um, reinvest this money into a safe for Philadelphia. So that letter, and I'll get you a copy of that letter when we send it out, should be coming going right. out soon. And so we, as chair, we've met with uh, Commissioner DiPietro uh, and expressed our desire to, um, to step up enforcement and he's on the same page with us, but he also acknowledged that he's, he's got to get these people hired, a lot more people hired. Um, but we want to make sure that when his enforcement team are going out to new construction sites, um, that they're actually meeting with these developers and these contractors to make sure the contractors are following the ordinances that are on the books. Because if, if, if these projects are getting certificates of occupancy and they haven't followed the ordinances, um, whether, whether it's sprinklers, or whether it's gas hookups, whether it's the electrical panels, you name it, um, we're only asking for 
for some future problems, you know, down the road. So, um, you know, that's that's part of a continued dialogue we have with the commissioner. And he, he does have our full commitment for more funding. And he does have our commitment. I, th I think these phones in this office are from like 1960. Oh, it sounds that way. Yeah. I don't know how to turn them off. But anyway, I apologize for that. Um, so, uh, and we're prepared to have hearings, you know, on a case by case basis on, on what we feel are need, um, needs, needs attention. Um, you know, if it's just an infrastructure problem, uh, if we find out that, that there was uh, something that caused that, that explosion down there, that was it, so far, we don't, we have no evidence that it was any of the mains or any of the laterals. Uh, but to, to the extent that we learn more about things like this, we're prepared to have hearings uh, at City Hall and bring in all the stakeholders that we need to. Okay. I'd like to bring in Denise Clay Murray here on Philadelphia Hall. Hi, Council Member Driscoll. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Same to you. Same to you. I, I guess my question for you, it, it, I'm going to start with L and I, because I have been a renter in Philadelphia for most of my career and have found that let's just say we have some landlords out here that are that are like creatively following the rules of renting and you know and and maintaining properties are the people that you're in or will any of the people that you're intending to get hired for LNI address that problem because for a lot of us that are looking for affordable housing unfortunately we are also beset by some of these landlords yeah, the, well, the rental suitability license, you're familiar with, with that, right? So we have a pretty good um, pretty good language that is supposed to be being followed. But as, you know, I think your word creative landlords, mm -hmm. they do everything they can to get around uh, the rules uh, that we, they ought to be following. And I, I think consistent with what we've been talking about is, is better enforcement with these landlords and and, and take them to task when they're not following these rules um if you if we have the ability to, to take their rental license away if they're not doing the right things legally or um or let's even say morally um so L and I is 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 I think the right agency for that and it, you know a lot of these landlords are absentee so we, we've been trying to get in touch with some landlords and then they'll, they'll have an LLC up in New York with no contact information. And so by the time we try and navigate who the heck we're dealing with, um, we're, we're, we're getting nowhere with some of those landlords. So that has to be addressed. How we do that, I'm not quite sure yet, but a better line of communication with all landlords, including absentee landlords. Okay. Now, the streets department just announced that they were doing the last bit of licenses yesterday for streeteries. Um, have you heard from anybody, any of your constituents about that? And, you know, it's not a big issue. Not a real big issue. Yeah, it's not a real big issue in the sixth. Oh, I think okay. Center City, like I'm sure Mark Squill and Council President Clark and South Philadelphia. Up, up here in the Northeast, we really don't have many requests for the outside eateries. Um, but I, but ha having long time ago been in the hospitality business, I am sympathetic to our restaurant industry and what they went through with this awful pandemic. Um, but at the same time, we have to be careful with public safety. Like these these outside street eateries have to be have to be safe. So. I think it's a blend of being sympathetic and accommodating to the hospitality industry, but at the same time, making sure public safety is number one. Now, the next question I'm gonna ask you is a question I've been asking all the council members that we've been interviewing um, as part of this. As, as, whether we like it or not, this is an election year. And you literally just got on council. 
but you've had the experience of having to do your job while also occupying, you know, also running for the office, running to continue to do your job. What advice could you give your fellow council members on how to, you know, make sure that you're still doing the people's business while you're running for election? Well, I had a mentor a long time ago by the name of Joe Egan. I don't know if you remember Joe. Joe was the head of um, the Commerce Department and then he was head of uh, PIDC. He taught me a long time ago, good, good government is good politics. So do your job, service your constituents, and good things will come. And make sure when you're doing your politics, it is as not when you when you should be doing your day job, so to speak. Um, I think being a good council person will have its rewards in and of itself, is what I would tell my colleagues. Okay. Now, like I said, you just became a council member, and then you're up for. Are you going to run for re-election? I intend to. Uh, to seek re-election, yes. I actually, there's a lot of work to do and I feel like we've only just begun, so to speak. Um, I know there's a lot on our plate, um, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna need more time to, to really get m my imprint on, on the, the city budget and with wh whoever the incoming administration is going to be. I pray that whoever is successful in the mayor's race is somebody that um, you know is is up for the job and and is willing to tackle some of the tough issues. And so I'm I'm willing to be a partner with the next mayor um, on whatever the, their vision for the city is, uh, assuming it, it's consistent with ours. Um, we're ready to roll up our sleeves with whoever that may be to uh, to address what I think is a great city. I mean. Let me just share with you this. So this is what I've told my staff. Um, as soon as we took office, I, I, I sort of have to have a, um, a goal, a benchmark, uh, sort of a, 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 an approach that there, there's, there's a deadline down the road so that when we are asking for cleaning up the city, where, where's our vision and what is that going to be? And we've internally, we're calling it the North Star Initiative mm -hmm. and the North Star that will be shining on Philadelphia on July 4th of 2026 mm -hmm. is the 250th anniversary of America and democracy. And we're going to be on the world stage. Philadelphia will be on the world stage. The federal government is investing a lot of money to throw the 250th birthday celebration here in Philadelphia. We're gonna have the World Cup that year, FIFA. We're gonna have the Major League All-Star Game, 2025. We're gonna have the, the 250th anniversary of the Marine Corps. You know, the, over these next several years, the world will be watching. And we want, we want tourism to come back like it was prior to the pandemic. Philadelphia was on the world stage, world map in terms of destination vacation places. We want that back. So this, so our goal is that day, we clean up our opioid problem as best we can. We clean up the homeless problem as best we can. We clean up the public safety problem as best we can. We clean up the bad landlords uh, as best we can. We clean up the quality of life nuisance problems as best we can. So as we look at that date of July 4th, 2026, we, we're, my entire staff and our, and our priorities, both in legislatively and budgetarily, you know, brings us to a city that when we are on that world stage is something we can all be proud of. Okay. Well, thank you. And, and, you're and I'm going to take you back to um, Larry McGlynn and you're listening to Hall Monitor on WPPM 106.5. Thank you. Thank you, Denise and Councilman. Thank you so much for being with us. I can't, I just I enjoyed this very much, and I look forward to continuing dialogue. And you know, if you have any suggestions on how we can be a better councilman, uh, never hesitate to let us know. All right. Well, thank you so much. Okay. God bless.
ठीक है